that I want throughout my life, the history of space. The first person to travel into outer space was the Russian astronaut Yuri Gagarin. He traveled in Vostok 1 on April 12, 1961. The mission lasted 108 minutes, and in it he managed to go around the Earth. Eight years later, on July 20, 1969, American astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first human being to set foot on the moon. He was the one who said the phrase, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong's mission was part of NASA's Apollo project. A total of six lunar trips were made, giving 12 astronauts to land on it. But there was one trip that had the same objective, and yet the result was not as expected. The journey of Apollo 13, from his trip of film starring Tom Hanks, was made. What happened was that two days after takeoff, the ship's number two oxygen tank suffered an explosion. This course tank number one to start having problems, and cause outages to the water, electricity and power. The astronaut jumps with dirt, was the one who alerted an acid base with the message. Houston, we have a problem. With the oxygen levels inside the ship dropping very quickly, the mission to reach the moon was cancelled. One year after the Apollo 13 accident, Russia launched Elliot, the first space station. But the crew that was on board the ship died after it was placed in orbit. As the capsule they were in right now the bear. Though the United States also decided to launch its space station. And in 1973, they launched the Skylab station into space. Yet the station remained in space for only six years. As its decaying orbit caused it to enter the atmosphere and be destroyed in an explosion. It wasn't until 1975 that the United States and Russia joined forces. The Apollo Soyuz project was the first space mission where the crew was international. After the launch of Alexei Lenov's crew, followed the crew of American astronaut Thomas Stafford. Towards the end of the 1970s, the unmanned human ships were launched into space with a mission for them to function as satellites. The two ships Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. By the end of the decade, they had already sent detailed photographs of Jupiter and Saturn. Then the Voyager spacecraft was continuing to explore space and communicate, sending reports and images to NASA's base. Right now they are approximately 18 million kilometers from the Sun. That's farther than the distance between Pluto and the Sun. In the 1980s, satellite communications were expanded so that satellites could transmit television signals. The people from home could pick up satellite signals with home antennas to watch TV programs. Thanks to these satellites, scientists managed to discover a hole in the ozone layer above Antarctica. Forest fires were detected, and photographs were taken of the Chernobyl exit in 1986. The first astronaut to walk in space without being tied to a ship was Bruce McCandless in 1984. On his mission, he tested a jetpack that allowed him to get 90 meters away from the ship for 90 minutes. Currently, astronaut suits can weigh up to 127 kilograms, and the average time it takes to put one on is about 45 minutes. After the space station Salyut, Russia sent a new model of space station known as Mir, seven times the size of the first space station. The Mir station remained in orbit for 15 years. The longest space travel was achieved by astronaut Valery Polyakov, who spent 437 days at the Mir station. During this decade, the United States began testing a ship so that it could be reused. The first flight was made with the Columbia, which completed 27 trips. The same did not happen with the Challenger ship, which exploded just 73 seconds after launch. On board the Challenger ship, there were seven people, five astronauts and two payload specialists. One of these specialists was Krista McCullough a school teacher who would have been the first citizen to travel into space. One month after the launch of the Mir space station, the spacecraft auto of the European Space Agency approached the nucleus of Halley's Comet at a distance of 596 kilometers. It was the first time that the appearance of the comet's nucleus was revealed at close range. In 1990, a Hubble telescope is sent into space by the shuttle Discovery. Although it wasn't the first telescope to send into space, it is the most important and is considered one of the main tools for space exploration. The Hubble telescope continues to orbit and explore the universe. It has provided us with images of galaxies that are millions of light years away from Mars and is estimated to stop working by 2030 or 2040. But in 1993, things changed because the Prime Minister of Russia, Viktor Chernomorin, and the Vice President of the United States at the time, Gore, and an agreement to merge the space station projects that each country had on the side, the United States was preparing 
the space station freedom. The goal they had with this station was that it would be in orbit with the Earth all the time, and that it would always have a crew inside taking care of it. Approved by President Ronald Reagan, the project was later cancelled. Meanwhile, Russia had the Mir to Space Station project. The project had begun in 1976, but it was still in development when the agreement was signed. It was planned that it would be similar in size to the first Mir station, and would serve for three years. Those projects eventually became what would be the basis of the current International Space Station. The first parts of the station were launched in 2000, and its construction continued until completion in 2011. The astronauts have lived on the station since the first year of construction. It cost $120 million to build and is 109 meters long. The station manages to make a float around the Earth every 90 minutes, and it's possible to see it in the sky as it's the very brightest object in the night. There is a website dedicated to tell you when you can see the station from your location. And in 2003, children became the third nation to send humans into space. And the ship Shenzhou 5 took off on October 15. It was the first manned spaceflight mission ordered by the Chinese space program. And its crew consisted of only astronauts near Neva. Then we found the way to get to Mars. The British team from the European Space Agency sent the Beagle to space probe in June 2003. Its mission was to search for signs of life on Mars, and was due to land on the planet in December of that year. But after separating from the Mars Express probe, the team was unable to establish communication with the probe. Communication attempts through NASA satellite, the Mars Odyssey failed. In January 2004, it was declared lost. Until January 2015, when it was seen through images of the orbiter. Those reconnaissance orbiter, NASA's rover Spirit was sent to the planet's surface in 2004, along with the Opportunity rover. With both evidence was discovered that water once flowed on Mars. They found molecules in what looked like ancient waterbeds. Currently all the water on Mars is frozen. The Curiosity rover is the most powerful astromobile that is sent to Mars. This one successfully landed in Gale Crater in 2012. The tools of Curiosity have managed to find chemical and mineral evidence that suggests that Mars was capable of hosting life in the past. Although the Curiosity mission was expected to last two years, the Astromobile continued to take samples from the Martian Sulfur Analysis. It has traveled about 21. And NAS is ready for the Mars 2020 mission, expected to be launched in July this year. This exploration continues to advance. But what can we expect in the future? For NAS and Mars is one of the most important focal points. Mars 2020 is just the beginning, as they hope to be able to do manned mission to Mars from 2030 onwards. But getting to Mars would not only be to explore the planet, one of the objectives is to determine whether Mars could indeed become a habitable place because settlement on other planets could prevent the extinction of the human race. Some of the difficulties and possible risks of exploring the planet are exposure to radiation, toxic soil, lack of water, extremely low temperatures in winter, and low gravity. Yet the approach of exploring Mars is not ruled out. In addition, the 2020 mission will employ a new technique to produce oxygen in the Martian atmosphere using MOXIE. The robot the size of a car battery. The planet's atmosphere is composed of 96% carbon dioxide, and it's hoped that MOXIE will be able to take the dioxide to expel it as oxygen and help future missions to Mars. Joining the Mars 2020 mission is the ExoMars 2020 mission. The European Space Agency will send its own rover to Mars. It will be the first European rover on the planet and is designed to extract and analyze rocks as well as searching for traces of life. This intends that by 2024, the first woman will set foot on the moon, as well as for lunar missions to be carried out again. For this, they have created the Artemis program, named after Apollo's twin sister Artemis. The ship that would be used for the mission will be the Orion ship, which is designed for deep space exploration, or exploration of distances of more than 30,000 kilometers from Earth. It is designed to explore what exists beyond the Earth and even outside the solar system. In addition to sending the spacecraft, NASA created the Space Launch System. This is the successor to the shuttle, and is the most powerful rocket launch that NASA has ever created. According to the design, the rocket is more than 100 meters high, and is capable of sending a manned ship and cargo into space in a single mission. The company SpaceX has projects ready for the future of space exploration. First there is the Starlink project, which seeks to send satellites into space, and with them create a broadband internet network and global access at a very low price. The company's CEO, Elon Musk, announced the satellite network in 2015. But it wasn't until 2019 that satellites began to be sent into space. 
but now there are 60 Starlink satellites in space. But by mid decade, the number is expected to have 12,000. And it's reconfirmed that the service of these satellites works. Another thing that is posed for space history is commercial flights beyond the Earth's atmosphere. This concept is not new because there have been private space flights before. The first was Dennis Dito, a New York engineer who became the first space tourist. He financed his own trip to the International, the station in 2001. He stayed there for eight days and his trip cost about $20 million. The sex wants to be the next company to send tourists into space. The Dragon ship will be able to allow people to travel in orbit. Trips will begin in late 2021 and they will not visit the International Space Station. That will remain in free flight in a collaboration between the European Space Agency and NASA. The Solar Orbiter was launched into space on February 10, 2020. The mission is for the orbiter to reach a distance of 26 million kilometers from the Sun and study its behavior. The James Webb Space Telescope will leave space in March 2021. This telescope, unlike Hubble, will look for the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. The scientists then study the physical and chemical properties and objects far in the universe. This history is cool, right? Would you like to travel into space in the future? Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Until the next video.